It's your Daily Dose of Donna. Welcome to the show. Today is Tuesday, July 11th. I love an 11. It's because my birthday is June 11th. So now that I just thought about it, July 11th, like any 11 is a good thing, right? What is your uh, What is your lucky number? My lucky number is 37. So I guess March 7th would be a lucky day. We have so much to talk about. So much to talk about. I've got a whole list. I literally took tons of notes about, like, I don't take notes like detailed notes about the stories. I just say what the story is I want to talk about, and then I just go. Um, welcome to the show. For all of you that are new here on TikTok Live, on YouTube watching, and listening on the podcast, I've got some homework for you. Number one, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe if you haven't already. It does wonders for me. I'm really trying to get to 7,000 subscribers before July 25th, when my eight-year-old gets back from camp and he's dying to see that I get to seven. That was, was like, he was like, mom, try to get to seven by the time I you pick me up. So we have about, I think there's, um, I think I need like 700 more subscribers before the 25th. 15 days, guys, help me um, share the show with anyone. If you are listening to the podcast, make sure to leave a five-star rating and write a review. I haven't had a new review for so long and I need like, I need more of those. So hook Daily Dose of Donna up. And of course, thank you so much for following on TikTok and on uh, Instagram at This Is Donna Bowling. Have you joined the Facebook page? The Facebook page is absolutely free. It's called Daily Dose of Donna. I never thought I was going to have a Facebook page. And here I am with 400 freaking people, 400 people on this Facebook page. So exciting. And finally, a huge announcement. I started a Patreon. I teased it yesterday on the show and I officially started it last night or yesterday afternoon. And I have some patrons already who have joined just from hearing about it in the Facebook group. The link will be below or in my bios everywhere. You guys, for a very, very small amount of money, you're gonna get tons of extra content from me and Zooms and all this. So I'm gonna re release my first Patreon episode later this week and it's gonna be a good one and it's gonna be all kinds of things that I don't feel comfortable saying publicly. Cause you know, I don't know. I just wanna say it with like my insiders. So that is the homework for today, you guys. That's it. Now we can move on to the real show. And it's 11-11 as I'm recording this. Happy 11-11, make a wish. Okay, I made my wish. Um, thank you so much for everyone that is here. All right, you guys, we've got so many stories that I think I'm gonna have to cut out some stories because some stories are really big and some stories are not that big. Um, I'm gonna start with, oh my gosh, I really just wanted to shout out a show that I'm watching right now. It's called Swiping America. It's on HBO Max or now it's known as Max. You guys have to... Uh, watch it. It's eight episodes only, and it's really easily digestible. And it's about four singles, three women, one man, two straight, two gay, um, who are struggling to find love in New York. And they go on this um, this kind of roundabout way, like around America, right? They go from New York, they go to where was the first place? Oh, like North Carolina. They go to Asheville. They go to Austin. They go to New Orleans. So I'm in the middle of the episodes. I'm not, I'm not done, but it's so cute. You guys have to watch it. So I have to shout out Swiping America. Um, Lance said that one of his friends is one of the camera guys on it. And he used to work on the Kardashians. It's shot really beautifully. So definitely, definitely just give it a try. Just give it a try. Speaking of the Kardashians, I have spent now a couple hours yesterday catching up, keeping up with those Kardashians. Um, I watched two episodes, maybe three. It's not enough for me to like stop what I'm doing and deep dive. Like last night when I was laying in bed watching TV alone, I didn't choose that as my show. That being said, I am still, so I'm still not at the Dolce & Gabbana story, which I'm dying to like get to because what is happening right now in real life with the, like the show and then Dolce & Gabbana. Apparently, I haven't gotten there yet, Kourtney Kardashian gets very mad at Kim Kardashian because she had a Dolce & Gabbana wedding a few months before this Dolce & Gabbana reached out to Kim Kardashian to ask her to fashion direct or to direct the fashion week for this, um, I don't I don't even know if it's Paris Fashion Week, New York, I'm not even there yet. And of course, Kim says yes. And she even says in the show, I'm a little worried about Courtney, but a job is a job. 
And like, I don't remember anyone owning a fashion brand. Like, like, I don't know. That part is weird. Now, meanwhile, currently in this moment, Kim Kardashian's been on this whole uh, Dolce & Gabbana kick and she's wearing all these Dolce & Gabbana outfits and she's showing up at all these events. And so we'll have to see what happens there. That is an interesting um, dynamic. The sister dynamic is always a weird one. I have to say. Uh, that being said, Kourtney Kardashian is incredibly difficult to watch on TV, in my opinion. In my opinion. I, 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 I really struggle with the lack of energy. I'm a big, I could go on to 16 tangents, but I'm a big personality person. Meaning like if I, I have a hard time watching someone that is monotone. I have a hard time watching someone that feels unhappy or mean. I have a hard time watching someone that is not bringing light. If you know what I mean, I'm talking about reality or like real personalities. I'm not talking about a scripted show. So Ugh, I struggle with her. I struggle with her. Another person who gives me that same kind of vibe, like an unhappy vibe. Now, this is really, you know, without knowing anything personal, is Morgan Wade. Morgan Wade is the country singer who has this rumored affair with Kyle Richards. Do you guys get this vibe? I'm just asking. I, obviously, like everyone else that's interested in this, have been watching, you know, um, all of the things transpire with Kyle Richards and Mauricio. And I have a few thoughts on that and I'll just go to them really fast before I go into uh, the other stories. But Morgan Wade, to me, is probably very good at what she does. I mean, she has a she has a nice voice. I haven't listened to a lot of her music. I've heard a couple of her songs just like on her stories or whatever. And she's famous and she's popular. Like it, it, she clearly has a career. But her personality, just from when I've seen her in her talking things, in her pictures, in her performances, feel cold. I don't know if that's just because she's gotten all this camera, um, all this attention right now and she doesn't, she's going through like a hard time, but I don't know. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Ember says, okay, confession. I'm crushing on Morgan Wade. Interesting. Tell me more. Tell me more. I don't think she's an unattractive person. She's not my type. If I was going to go for a woman, I don't know if that would be the one. I love a singer. I love a guitar player. Like I always tell my sons, like if you really want to get some uh, some attention, pick up that guitar. I don't know about you guys, but I was always into the guitar player boys. Um, so I get like the talent. I'm just interested. Like maybe some people like that kind of like cold um, – you know, tough exterior. Okay, interesting. She seems like she's taking care of Kyle. Interesting. Okay, you, tats move to the front of the lines. You guys want to hear a funny quick story about tattoos? So I have no tattoos. Not I'm not against it. I just have never gotten one. And, um, you know, I think ra being raised Jewish in my mind, I was like, you're not supposed to get a tattoo, although I'm not into that anymore. Like, I can definitely get a tattoo. I'm not scared of that whatsoever. But my husband, uh, Lance, when I met him, part of the reason I didn't want to date him, there was a few reasons, because on paper, he just wasn't like the guy that I thought I was going to end up with. And one of the reasons is because he had a freaking tattoo that went up on his neck. And I love that tattoo now. But I was like, who has a neck tattoo? Lance does. And he's mine, ladies. I know you love Lance. Speaking of, Lance will be part of the Patreon. So you guys are, any any Lancers here? I know the Dosers and the Lancers. Don't worry, he'll be there. Um, okay, so <laughs> cutting to a few different stories. I get a question. Someone just asked, isn't Kyle, isn't Morgan Wade Kyle's sponsor? Um, obviously, nothing is official out there, but I will have a whole Patreon episode that will dedicate a lot of time towards this story. And I think you guys will be interested in it. And I don't want to be that person, but I can't feel comfortable putting out stuff publicly because I don't want to, I just don't want to do that. But, um, but that's just all I'll say about that. But I don't think she's her sponsor. I will say that. I really don't. I've never thought, I've never thought because I don't think Kyle is a, an open admitted alcoholic. And if so, I don't think that that's her sponsor. I really don't. I really don't. Um, okay. So let's move on. 
We're not really into Britney Spears on the show. We don't talk a lot about Britney Spears. That's because I'm not that interested in Britney Spears. If I can be 100% honest, I used to be a Britney Spears obsessed, but I'm not um, and haven't been for years and years. And her Instagram, like I had to unfollow her on Instagram and everything just feels a little wackadoodle time. You know, that's a shout out to that TikTok sound. It's wackadoodle time. But, but she does have a memoir that is officially coming out on October 24th. And that is, uh, you know, she's been rumored to have this book that hasn't been released forever. And the rumors were wh why the book wasn't um, coming out, you guys, <laughs> was like for two years. They were saying that there was a lack of paper. Hand to God. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Lack of paper. Meanwhile, books are coming out left and right. So Britney Spears' book called The Woman and Me, and the, the, the front cover is an older picture. It looks like an older picture of her holding her topless body to the side, looking hot. I will definitely be reading that. The question is, how much did she write? I never can, like, really get an idea if she's actually behind her stuff. It's very confusing to me. Jessica Simpson's book, for example, loved, and I'm not a huge Jessica Simpson fan at all anymore. I loved the old Jessica, like Jessica and Nick and Jessica in those times, but her book was fantastic. And I really do think Jessica Simpson wrote that book for the most part. Maybe I'm crazy, but I loved it. Note to self or note to you. If you do like the audio version, I like listening to audio versions of any um, memoirs because if it's a memoir, I want to hear the person speak about it. Listen to it at 1.5 speed or two speed for Jessica Simpson specifically. Um, really interesting. I love a celebrity a memoir. Actually, tell me your favorite celebrity memoirs. That was like my first kind of foray into um, nonfiction. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, nonfiction or like um, – biographies or whatever was celebrity memoirs. I've read so many. I loved Molly Shannon's. That's one that like I read recently. Obviously, Jeanette McCurdy's. Oh my God. I feel like I need to read Minka Kelly's. I've heard a lot of good stuff about that. Okay, you guys have a bunch. Viola Davis, Doris Day, Jessica Simpson, Prince Harry. I can't with Prince Harry. Um, off topic, but I love your top. I'm gonna, you guys, I'm gonna stand up for you if you're watching the YouTube version. Watch. Oh my gosh, it's pretty short right now. It's not a top. It's a little... It's a little dress. Thank you. Shout out, Marshalls. Um, Jonathan Van Ness, Elizabeth Vargas, Elizabeth Taylor. You guys have a bunch. Okay, so yes, if you're watching here on YouTube, make sure to leave your comments so other people can get it and we can make a Facebook thread in the Facebook group as well. All right, Tiffany Haddish, Corey Feldman. Okay, so many. Jonah Hill. We have to talk for a moment about Jonah Hill because I am – taking a very unpopular um, perspective. And I got into it with a lot of people yesterday on my live because a lot of people didn't agree with what I had to say. And I was very, very clear that I am welcoming and open to disagreements on my page. I am so, or on my, like in my show, because I don't know it all. I'm just going off what I know, right? I'm just going off my thoughts. And my thoughts could be very different from you. And what I want to know is how you can change my mind. And I want to be able to change your mind if I have some good evidence. So I am so interested in hearing you guys. I am team Jonah. Well, no, I'm not team Jonah. Scratch that. I'm team neither on this one. But if I had to choose one, I hate to say it, you guys. I'm going to go with a person whose privacy was horribly breached. And, um, and I think that that is so not cool. And I think when you send a text message to anyone, especially someone you're in a loving relationship with, I can't believe um, that that can be okay. Like if, if people released every single text message I've ever sent to any ex, any friend, like drunk, mad, sad, anxious, like lots of stuff could look really bad for all of us. You included, you included. We're not all perfect. Now, I said yesterday that Lance felt that he should have gotten an NDA and maybe he should have. But what happened yesterday, which I thought was 
if anything happened, it just made the Sarah Brady's case worse. And I'll just get into this for a couple minutes because I did a lot about it yesterday. Um, she continued to release texts. She needs to stop releasing text messages. Like this cannot be the norm because privacy is already so hard to maintain. And as a celebrity and someone in the public eye, this is your probable, it's your worst nightmare. It's, it's not like he was tweeting these things and they're getting on, you know, you know how like when celebrities get their tweets that all of a sudden um, get unearthed from 2012 or whatever, that's different. That's public. This is private. This is getting like recorded without your consent. Sorry. Right? Um, I'm sorry, Jill Zarin. Okay, so what I believe is... I believe that she, you guys are all saying something and I need to know what you guys are saying. Sarah, it's the timing for me. Yesterday, Sarah Brady, the ex-girlfriend, continued on her tirade in her stories. Mind you, in her stories, she's gained over 50,000 Instagram followers over this, you guys, 50,000. For context, I have about 20,000 followers and I've been working on my Instagram account for five years. So just know what that means for someone's career. She released publicly on her stories that she specifically released this information now because she wanted to wait until after his baby was born as to, as the hero, right, not um, challenge or make a, a pregnant woman's life more challenging for her and her baby. You know what's better? Let's wait until the baby is born. And the woman is not sleeping at night and breastfeeding maybe and her, her tits are falling off in pain and she's already hormonal and she's already struggling and we all know how hard it is when you have a newborn and then let this come out. Sure, that's, gr that's great for her. Sorry, you guys, that is so shady. What was the goal here? Was the goal to let his current girlfriend know what was happening? Okay. It's called a private uh, text. It's called a s private DM. It's called a here, I want you to know this. Or was your goal to take someone down? That's when it goes public. Now, a lot of people like to say it's because she was struggling so much and abusers need to like be able to release this. And, I mean, ab people who have been abused, Sometimes it takes years and years for them to finally be able to feel strong enough and to really, I get that. But you can also do that anonymous. You don't have to dox someone in your past to feel free. You don't. I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends who have gone through situations. In fact, I have one friend specifically who works with women who are going through divorces. She's like, um, you know, a very high conflict divorce coach. This is not the way, okay? There's therapy, there's counseling, there's writing a book, there's writing this, there's it. Like people would have figured it out. People would have figured it out. People are an idiots. There's paparazzi pictures of the two of them together. She didn't have to dox him. You know, it reminds me of, um, oh gosh, who was it? Who was it? There was someone on Armchair Expert like a year ago who talked about her relationship with a man who was like 20 years, her senior, and they had this very, very challenging, now I can't remember. She's an actress and she talked about how she was in a relationship with this man and it wasn't Chris, obviously Kristen Bell is his wife. It was another um, adorable girl that I felt like he had like this kind of flirty relationship with her. Um, maybe he dated her at one point. I can't remember. I'm going to have to think about this and I'm going to be so annoyed with myself that I can't remember. Anyway, she talked very openly on Armchair Expert. Dax Shepard was the guy, obviously, because it was Armchair Expert, but she talked very clearly, his guest, about how she was in a relationship with someone 20 years her senior and it was very challenging and they struggled with this and they struggled with that and that's it. Guess what? We all did. We went and Googled her name and found out her ex-boyfriends. That's what you do. Okay, it feels really shady to release the name yourself. That being said, 
Anna Kendrick, thank you so much. Anna Kendrick. Oh my gosh, Alyssa, thank you. That would have killed me. So I think that there is, um, you'll remember in the middle of the night, I hate that. I hate when that happens. Um, I, I think that there is a responsibility to people's privacy when it's not hurting anyone else. Now, if she was trying to protect this Olivia girl, like I said, she would have gotten directly to her, but this was not that. And she continued to release so many more text messages last night that guess what they did? They made me feel like, oh my gosh, this is opening. Look, I'm going to show you guys my boobs. That she, she, um, I feel like she released so many more text messages last night that all they did, I swear, you guys are going to think I'm insane, but I promise you if you go back and re read the original, I mean, the additional text messages that she released from eight, six, seven, whatever months after they broke up, when he tells her out of the kindness of his own heart, because he didn't have to, that you have, um, I want you to know I have found someone else that, that I'm dating. And she loses it on him because apparently they were still talking and apparently he had just sexted her seven weeks ago and this is wrong. I don't know. Am I crazy? Isn't this what you do when you date? Isn't this what you do when you date? You date and then you kind of keep in control, like in con uh, contact. And maybe if you're drinking one night, you hook up and then you, you're friends of benefits and then you try to be friends and then you, and then you don't try and then you find someone else. And then it's over. And all he had to do was, he actually didn't have to do anything. He was kind. You guys are going to think I'm insane, but he was kind. Read this text messages. He straight up says to her, and now I feel like I need to read some of them to you because if you're listening to this and you don't have the energy or want to go and read her text messages, the newer ones that she released, but these were what they said. This is five months after they broke up, five months after they broke up and he, and some things came out that basically he said, um, you know, well, a couple things first, I want to say really fast. He straight up says to her in these messages, um, he says, I don't, I know I don't need to. This is August 30th. Okay, you guys, they break up five months before this. So imagine they broke up in May. I'm sorry, March. August 30th, 2022. He goes, I know I don't need to, but in the spirit of pure respect to our friendship and appreciation for each other, I did want to be transparent that I did start dating someone recently. I'm sorry if that's painful. It just happened. And I didn't want to not be transparent with you ever as I care about you. I'm sorry. No ex-boyfriend has ever sent me that. She says, thanks for letting me know. Probably best if we don't talk for a while and you figure out where that's headed. Makes sense, right? He goes, I appreciate and understand that. Then she sends him a text of a paparazzi picture of the two of them, of him and his new girlfriend, like hooking up in the ocean. Okay. And she goes, impressive turnaround time, by the way. And then she continues to say, not that it's really my business, but out of my own personal chicks before dicks code, if that's headed anywhere other than a hookup or a fling, I'd appreciate if you'd make that woman aware of how recently you've been flirting with me, sexting me and leaning on me for partner level emotional support. He goes, I'm sorry, what? He goes, I've been there for you as a friend, which I have made very clear. And not only is it not your business, as I only mentioned it to you out of respect and friendship, but I have not been flirting with you or sexting you in any way where it would be inappropriate at this time to start dating someone. And if any anything, I have felt for your change and tried to be a good and supportive friend as you transition to a scary new environment. And to be crystal clear, um, Jonah is gross. Okay, just wait, Vanessa. Um, you may think that. I know I'm getting a lot of hate from, from women thinking I'm a horrible person, but what can I say? Um, he goes, and to be crystal clear, I have not flirted or sexed with you in any way or shape shape in months and went to say goodbye to you as a super kind gesture uh, that you seem to have appreciated, but it was kind of, I'm sorry if it's upsetting that I would move on at all six months later, but I've handled you and with utmost love and respect. Don't ruin all the kindness. You're better than that. And she responds with a screenshot of him saying something sexual about holding his hard beep. And it was seven weeks prior. Okay. When I met Lance, he probably had had sex with a girl that week. 
because that's what you do when you're dating. <laughs> I don't get it, you guys. It's so horrible that he moved on with a new girl and text, texted her about holding his hard penis seven weeks before. Sorry. I don't get it. He responds, this is a new side of you, Sarah. I care about you and will always be your friend as I have been. Yes, we sexted two months ago. And he goes, this isn't my way of communicating. Much respect, Sarah. I know you'll crush it at school. Good luck. Never expected this from you after all the care and love I've put into being there for you post-breakup. Take care, Sarah. And then he says this. And after what I shared with you about my privacy and anxiety, I'm just in shock, actually, at how you're behaving even as a friend. Get this, you guys. This is in August of 2022. He says, screenshotting intimate text between us is a huge triggering violation for me and a breach of trust as a friend I have. I have explained to you about breaches of trust I have had between trusted friends recently that have caused me trauma. I'm incredibly hurt and feel a lack of safety where I have always trusted you. I'm sorry if a former partner moving on is painful and I empathize with that, but I've done nothing wrong. And if I wasn't a public person, I wouldn't have faced this kind of violation. And having shared that with you and then watching you be like this today shatters my ability to trust anybody even further. I have always shown you kindness and support. That's pretty kind of sad that he straight up said in August, this is the worst way to hurt me is to screenshot and, and release my text to anyone. There you go. Then she does it, right? And I don't know about you guys. I'm, hold on. I want to see some of your comments. Um, twirling text. When I've been single, I hooked up with people I'd slept with before. Hell yes. That's what you do. You go back to your ex-boyfriends or your ex-girlfriends because they're comfortable. I think it's very, very possible or normal to do that. And how many times do people do that? That's not weird. I don't know. Something's going on. Um, let's see. Sandy says, we don't know something. She's not crazy. Never said she was crazy. I don't believe she's crazy. Um, sometimes narcissists use psychology terms to appear kind, but it's low-key manipulation. Remind you this. She didn't have to stay with him. You do have to take a little bit of responsibility when it comes to who you date. And he was not threatening her safety because we would know we're seeing all the texts. He would not threaten her safety. He has not from what we see. And he has not kept her hostage in any way. Now, we do know he was taking care of her financially. So maybe that was part of the reason why she didn't want to leave. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, it's very easy to quickly jump to a conclusion about something when you hear the word abuse or narcissism or control. And I don't agree with that text about don't post pictures in a bikini, don't surf with men. I don't like that. I, I think that's shitty. But then she should have broken up with him. That was months before she was still being his friend. If he's so horrible to you and then you break up, why are you still friends with him? You guys, I'm sorry. I don't get it. Yes, people stay for many reasons. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, fine. But then they break up. I honestly, answer this question. They break up. So now she's free of him, but she remains his friend. She remains to sex with him. Why? Why? Okay. Anyway. That's my thoughts on that. Join Patreon. Okay, you guys, a couple other things that I thought were interesting in the news. Um, Tori Spelling. Can we talk for five seconds about Tori Spelling? Tori Spelling was spotted with her family of 14,600 kids walking out of a $100 a night motel. Okay, you remember yesterday when I was talking about Crappy Lake? Welcome to Crappy Lake or whatever, um, the Sonia and Luann show. This is the kind of motel she's in, right? I don't understand. Now, everyone on my Facebook page, when I posted it, seems to think it was some sort of a, um, you know, uh, PR, BS, like publicity moment, right? She's trying to show like, oh my God, our lives are so hard. Now, other people are saying she's dealing with mold. Okay, fine. You're dealing with mold. 
but there are other places to stay. I'm just going to be honest. Like Tori Spelling, I don't believe she doesn't have the money to pay for, um, to pay for a better like living situation, like an Airbnb. I just don't, especially because Candy Spelling, her mother, who we all know is a multimillionaire, was just on Jeff Lewis Live. You know, I'm a chump. She was just on Jeff Lewis Live on Thursday of last week. Great interview with Josh Flagg, who's from Million Dollar Listing. And she was straight up talking about how she loves Tori and she's always been there for her. And she knows, Tori knows that she will always be there for them and help them. She was alluding to some drama between um, Dean, like Candy and Dean. I don't think Candy and Dean like each other. In fact, Josh Flagg said that he and Dean almost got in a fight last month at Tori Spelling's birthday party. So there is some weirdness there, but Trust me, Tori Spelling can always go to Candy Spelling for money or for a place to stay. Just saying. Something is off with that. But to put your kids, if it's just like a PR stunt, which I don't know if it is, but if it is, what is that about bringing your kids, invo- involving your kids into these? You guys, it is. It's like the Kim and Croy thing. Now, this is, this is just like sick. This is sick. You don't involve your kids in this. Fine, go to the hotel and come out on your own looking like a ragtag, you know, don't have any money. But with your kids, I don't know, you guys. I was not feeling it, but I'm curious what the story is. Um, my mom says hi and that Dean spent all their money. Dean was definitely not um, a prize, in my opinion. Like, I watched all those shows. I loved their early reality shows. Did you guys watch, like, the one where they bought a – Air like a be breakfast in bed. What are they called? Be bed and breakfast. Um, and and it was uh very 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 cute. And I loved those shows. But Dean was always shady. In fact, I remember. I'll never forget. I even still have it somewhere in my phone in my photo um photo roll about uh about Dean. It's like a video that I recorded on the TV of Dean McDermott writing a song for Tori and playing on his guitar. And he's a horrible singer and it's a horrible song. And she's just like, I'm going to try to find that scene. So good. I do want to shout out something really fast. I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, talking about their personal experiences with, um, you know, I was going to say narcoleptics, you know what I mean? Narcissists um, and controlling and abusive behavior. I stand with you. I want you to know this, okay? I want you to know this for anyone that is here and watching the show and listening to the show and watching me on TikTok, I do stand with you. Like I said, what Jonah Hill said in that text message was not okay. Two things can be true, okay? Two things can be true. But as someone who, you know, um, grew up with a very, very effed up father, I understand. I stand with you. I, I promise you I'm a girl's girl. Promise you. Okay. We can, we can, we can agree on two things at the same time. I just want you to know that that was really important for me to tell you guys. Um, all right. One last story that I just had to throw in and then we'll be done. Sonia Morgan, my girl, Sonia, I freaking love Sonia. How hot does Sonia Morgan look on Watch What Happens Live two nights ago? She looked so gorge, like younger than me. (laughs) She's so pretty. Dave Portnoy, who's the head of Barstool Sports, he's very, very popular on, um, you know, on social media. He's a very strongly worded, uh, says whatever's on his mind, conservative leaning type of dude. His, I think his username is Stool Presidente or something like that. Um, he, he had, I guess, a post. I didn't see this. Maybe it was a TikTok. Maybe it was a story where he was talking about Tom Brady and Kim Kardashian. He basically was saying, Tom, if you want to F Kim Kardashian, go and do it. Do it in a motel or in a hotel, but don't date her. She'll ruin your life. That be, being said, I don't agree with any of that, but that's fine. So Sonia Morgan, bless her heart, writes on an Instagram comment. She really says, I mean, she says, Dave, does that mean there's hope for you and I to go to a motel? 
with like a little couple of emojis. Was she joking? Was she serious? Maybe she's attracted to him. Maybe she's not. But clearly she was flirting. It was like a cute little flirt. And this guy, this young guy, younger, not young, younger dude, writes back and says, um, ew, not to be mean, but ew, gross. How embarrassing for Sonia. And also like, she's so not gross. I mean, she's kind of gross on the show, like if you think about it, but, um, but she's not gross. What did you guys think about that? Um, Caleb is the real star of Barstool. Check him out. I will. I will. I, I'm always interested in new personalities. If you guys love anyone online, if you guys love following a YouTube channel or a podcast that I don't know about, here's what I can't stand. I can't stand any of like the aesthetic girlies. Like I'm kind of done with that. Um, Luna Vela says, not embarrassing for her. He embarrassed her himself. Sarah says, he should be flattered. Absa freaking lutely. Um, oh my gosh, you guys are fun. This is always so fun for me. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. We're at 36 minutes. You guys, I love you. Thank you so much for being a doser. Thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing the show with all your friends, making sure to uh, leave the reviews, ratings, all of that. And uh, it means the world to me. If, you've, if you're here on YouTube for the first time, just leave a comment and tell me. It's so lovely. And I'll see you guys in the Facebook group. And hopefully I'll see you on Patreon where you're going to get your first episode this week. And we're going to deep dive more on the Kyle and Morgan thing and maybe some more insider gossip. I love you guys. Bye.